Welcome to another episode of InRange. This is a long-awaited update in the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project. And when we did the original 2017 project, we didn't really look very deeply into the bulk care group. We just went with the mil-spec BCG. And frankly, we should have probably done a better job and looked deeper at that, because there's a lot of nuance involved in the BCG. And now that the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project is a commercial one that you can pre-order through Brownells, um, we wanted to do a better job with that and look at what the best solution should be for the best possible rifle. But first we have to wait for this. This is the K-Arms KP-15 monolithic lower and it is now in production and hitting the shelves and being um, sent out to pre-order customers via Brownells. And now that this is in full production, we can start working in the full production of the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project. And that's why we're starting to kick off these videos now, so stay tuned for many more to come. But what, like I said, when we went in the 2017 project, we didn't really look very closely at the bulk carrier group itself. And so for the 2020 project, I've been testing a number of bulk carrier groups. Uh, one of them you saw a review of on the channel here, which was the Surefire bulk carrier group, designed by James Sullivan himself, of course a very important man in the development of the AR-15. And I'm confused by people's thoughts that that might have been the solution we were going to go to for the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project. Um, I, I thought I was very clear in that video, and that that particular bolt care group and the design changes that Sullivan made in them are really completely only applicable to a fully automatic rifle. So either an M4 or a full M16A2 or something like that. The, the dwell time helps with fully automatic fire, and the anti-bounce bolt weight in the rear is designed to, of course, prevent carrier bounce during the cycling of full auto. Well, first of all, the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project is not oriented around a fully automatic or select fire gun, although the KP-15 is capable of that if you're an SOT. But also, the Surefire bolt carrier group with its weight in the rear is not compatible with one of the other essential components of the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project, which is the monolithic self-contained JP capture spring. So it is not compatible with the What Would Stoner Do solution whatsoever, and it has no applicable use in a semi-automatic rifle whatsoever, whether it's What Would Stoner Do or not. So uh, sadly, I cannot recommend that bulk carrier group for the standard AR-15 owner. It's a very niche product. But then we started looking at other bulk carrier groups and all the other things that are out there with all special sorts of cuts and changes that have happened over time. Uh, one of the most important ones being the bolt carrier group finish. When Eugene Stoner originally designed the AR-10, his solution was to have a hard chrome plating on the entire bolt carrier group. And as that continued on into the AR-15, which started off with hard chrome bolt carrier groups, the manufacturing costs went up and the manufacturing quality went down and maybe the technology to do proper hard chrome plating wasn't quite there yet, I don't know. But issues started happening in the field in which some of the hard chrome would start flaking off of the bolt carrier groups because it wasn't properly plated. Corrosion would then happen underneath the actual chrome plating and that was a failure in the field. In my opinion, it was probably a combination of both cheaping out on the manufacturing processes but also being a little ahead of its time as a lot of the original AR-15 sort of was. So what you see here on the table are two very old school AR-15s. This is the Brownells AR-15 Proto, a reproduction of one of the earliest AR-15s ever made. And this is the Colt, real Colt SP-1, that actually kicked off the What Would Stoner Do project. I got this rifle, started shooting it, and it really set off a light in my mind of what the heck went wrong with the AR-15. So in that regard, I've been testing those different bolt carrier groups, a number of them, through both of these rifles, although it could have been through any AR, but it felt right to do it in these retro ones. And we have come to a solution, or I believe the right answer. And the right answer for the What Would Stoner Do 2020 project is the Young Manufacturing Hard Chrome Plated Bolt Carrier Group. Not only is it hard chrome, which turns out, I believe, to be the right answer for the type of plating that you want on your bolt carrier group, it has a number of advantages as well that I'm gonna show later in the video. But what happened was, is after that chrome plating failed in the field, the military went to a different solution, which was just phosphate, which was, I believe, chosen completely for cheap reasons. It was easy and cheap to do and mass produce. However, it is probably the worst finish you could have on a bolt carrier group in an AR-15. Hard chrome is a very smooth, hard, slick surface that requires minimal lubrication to work properly. Phosphate is the opposite. It requires extensive lubrication to work properly. Although you can fire modern AR-15s dry, one of the reasons you hear the lore about run your AR wet is, I believe, strongly based around that phosphate finish on the mil-spec AR-15 bolt carrier group. So then you saw a lot of things happen in the market. Fail zero amongst others, which were other improved and advanced uh, 
coatings and solutions for plating the bulk carrier group. And all of them, from what I can tell, all of them are better than the phosphate solution that the mil-spec bulk carrier group is ultimately using. However, I don't believe that any of them are actually better than what the original design principle was with hard chrome plating. Upon doing all the testing, hard chrome absolutely was resilient, shows very little wear and tear, is extremely easy to clean. So I'm going to switch over now to Russell Fagan who's going to walk you through cleaning this bolt carrier group and show you some of the advantages of the Young Manufacturing Bolt Carrier Group which is not just the chrome plating. And then we're going to come back to me and I'm going to show you a little more. So this is the bolt group out of the machine gun that we did a total of 1500 rounds through, a thousand during the recoil video and then another 500 afterwards between the match I used it at and uh, people just generally having fun with it. So I'm going to take it apart and show the state of all the parts inside of it and then I'll show cleaning it. So I get the cotter pin out to get the firing pin out. Rotate the cam pin. Now this is the HMB bolt. Uh, you'll see that the bolt does not have a through hole for the cam pin. It's solid on one side and the cam pin itself is shorter. What this does is make the bolt more durable on shorter gas systems and high rates of fire so that it doesn't crack in half. That is the most common failure point on carbine length gas system rifles, uh, particularly full auto ones, is you'll see it crack right through here where the cam pin is. So because that through hole doesn't exist, uh, this makes the bolt more durable. Another feature I'll point out on the bolt carrier group is the recoil lug area machined into the bolt carrier itself, and then the recoil lug on the uh, carrier key. So what that does is it allows the screws to not take any of the energy of the gas pressure uh, as it travels through the bolt carrier group. So it works kind of like a recoil lug for your optic on a pistol slide, in that the energy isn't being transferred to the screws, it's being transferred directly into that cutout in the bolt carrier itself via the lug on the carrier key. So nothing fancy here. I'm just gonna spray down the bolt group with some REM oil and show wiping it off to give you an idea of how much easier it is to clean the chrome carrier than a phosphated or black carrier group. And the good thing about chrome is as you wipe it down, you can see that it is in fact clean. Not going to clean the whole thing, but really gives you an idea of how easy it is for all that carbon to come off. I'll do the bolt itself. The bolt itself is also chromed. Of course, in the rear of the tail here where there's heavy carbon buildup, you would need to use a scraper tool to get that off. But you can see even on this area where it's pretty caked on, it's wiping off with just a rag. So not gonna fully clean it on camera, but this will give you an idea of how much easier it is to clean a chrome carrier and chrome bolt group than a standard. You can see the bolt lugs there as I just wipe between them, it comes off. And then hosing it down with REM oil, it just runs off. Wiping down the firing pin now and it came pretty clean on its own. There is some carbon build up there that you'd have to get off of the scraper tool if you'd like to. Um, I usually don't worry about that unless it's getting really thick back there. Wipe off the short cam pin. Now the cam pin itself is black, so we can see all the wear pattern on it from how it moves back and forth in the bolt carrier group. And while there is surface wear on it, uh, we're not seeing any kind of stress fractures or cracking. 
Now I'm going to remove the extractor from the bolt itself. And in here we can also see all the carbon buildup. The young manufacturing bolts do come with the O-ring around the outside of the extractor spring, but no internal uh, rubber bumper. Uh, using both at the same time is kind of redundant. So let's hose down the inside of the bolt and see how that looks. Now, just hosing it down, you can see it's nice, clean, shiny chrome on the inside there. Hose off the bolt face. A little bit of carbon around the outside of it, but that wipes clean off as well. Now, let's hose down the extractor. And again, carbon just runs right off. So, really simple maintenance with a chrome bolt carrier group. Now, do you want this much lube on your bolt when you're actually going to use it? Probably not. So wipe off the excess. But I'm just going to throw it back together on camera and show that all the parts are functioning and moving freely. Feels nice and smooth. And this is where if you're really OCD, you're gonna drive yourself nuts getting all your fingerprints back off of it before you put it back into your rifle. So here we have the Brownells Proto AR-15 and that ha this has the Young Manufacturing Bolt Carrier Group in it, um, which I've been using for a testing platform. So let me go ahead and show you real quick, kind of similar what Fagan just did, but on another one so we get you know more than one sample. So pull the pin, open her up, and let's pull that out. So this has, this is always a little tough. This this particular bolt carrier group has, it is grungy, as you can see, really quite gross. It has at least a few thousand rounds put through it with really no true cleaning. Um, in fact, mostly run as dry as possible with no lubricant, which is not advised. Mechanical machines and parts require lubrication and should be lubricated, but it is filthy. And um, so this is going to show why we believe this hard chrome plating is the right answer. So first of all, in its mostly dry state, let me go ahead and grab a rag. It's a, there's a little lube on it, but it is not wet by any stretch. And let's just go ahead and um, wipe. This is with no, no fluids at all. No oil, nothing. And, um, yeah, I didn't even spray anything on this, and you can see that this is essentially coming entirely clean. Even the carrier key is coming clean by just wiping it with a dry rag. Let's go ahead and pull it apart a little further and do the same. Don't lose that little guy. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's pretty grungy as well. So there's the bolt. I'm gonna do the same thing. No, no oils, no nothing. I'm just literally just using a dry rag. And uh, yeah, could you want that to be more cleaner than that? I mean, you could scrape away from the chrome at the base of this a little bit, which I probably can just do a little bit with my fingernails. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's coming off with a fingernail, which shows you how easy it is to get that off if you're worried about it. But the bolt carrier group literally just wipes free. Toothbrush amongst those little teeth right there, or just use your finger to get into them. And uh, there's the bolt. So after looking at all the different modern Gee Whiz modifications and changes that have happened in the bolt carrier groups over time, um, the Young having a few modifications which we believe made sense. The Gasky has a recoil lug in it, as you already saw and the bolt itself is not bored all the way through, which is the most common failure point on an AR-15 high usage bolt, uh, thus in increasing the strength and rigidity of the bolt itself. But guess what? Stoner and team had it right once again, as they did with so much of the AR-15. Hard chrome plating is, in our opinion, the right answer, and this is the best bolt carrier group on the market, and therefore the best bolt carrier group for the What Would Stoner Do? 
2020 project. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you're building your own AR-15, I would advise you to look into the Young Manufacturing Bolt Care Group. If you're interested in the What Would Stoner Do project, you can pre-order a What Would Stoner Do 2020 rifle, moving closer and closer to full production now via Brownells. Um, or you could do your own as we've discussed otherwise. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope you appreciate this sort of in-depth deep dive stuff. It took us a lot of rounds and a lot of effort to figure out and come to this answer, which ironically was already answered with the original AR-10. Uh, Stoner and his team and Sullivan and crew were truly geniuses of their time. So um, what I do need to tell you is that, of course, InRange is completely a Patreon-supported project. We do not um, have any advertisers or overlords completely viewer-supported by viewers like you via Patreon. If you already are one, thank you. Please consider it. Um, we do will receive a very small amount of every full, complete What Would Stoner Do 2020 rifle sold on Brownells in full disclosure. We do not receive anything from KP-15 lowers themselves, strictly the complete rifle. Um, or any of the components. We don't get anything from components either. If you go buy a young manufacturing bolt care group, that doesn't kick back to in-range whatsoever. The only thing that comes back to in-range is Patreon support and complete rifle sales. Um, appreciate your viewage. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to us. We're not only on YouTube, we're all over the place. You can find multiple different distribution points at inrange.tv slash watch. And above and beyond that, share with your friends because the algorithm doesn't do it for us. Thanks for watching.